Right. Um, okay. So, so uh, any, anyway, anyway, let, let's get started. Right. They've disappeared, Pete. Hey, yeah, they've disappeared. Oh, for God's sake, we were just about to start. Do you know, do you know, you can't make it up now, can you? Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. It's, oh, do you know what? Well, I, oh, we'll, we'll just hang around waiting around for them, Pete. Flipping heck. So, do, 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 do. La 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 no, no, you can keep it on record if you want. Born in Cornwall, oh, proud to be, taken to London with my family. War broke out, not safe to be. Became very young, evacuee. Back to Cornwall, to Auntie Lizzie, to live away from my family. Had a great life in the countryside. Met my family only at St. Peter's time. Life in my boyhood years. Fun friends, maybe a few tears. Always after school, jobs to be done. Once completed, time for fun. Weekend tasks, clean out the chickens. Evening time, okay to read Dickens. Sunday, best clothes for Sunday school. Teach the girls, play the pool. Oh, we look out, here they are, they're coming back. We're back. Right, 11 plus exam to pass. If successful, off to the class. Right. Right now, now we can get on with it. Right. So, what I, one thing I wanted to ask is that over the next few weeks, uh, are you guys able to get over to Sully um, Sully Church Graveyard and with Richard um, try to find some gravestones? Yeah, if it's not raining, yes, good. Yeah, so that'd be nice. So, so what we'll do, uh, we'll have a chat about that next Wednesday, and uh, we'll we'll have everybody on, including Richard, and. Um, and uh, Kathy at Richard's house in, in inspecting all his decor, right? Yeah. Um, so taking notes, your... my priorities. Taking photographs. <laughs> taking photographs, yeah, that's your priority. Um, I don't think Pauline um, is going to be too impressed with you shifting over his house. Oh, I don't know. Uh, ladies like that sort of thing, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, oh, you, look like, you look like a complete witch, Kate. Do I? Thanks. Oh, I'm not surprised. I know. Sorry. I'm sure I do. Sorry. I haven't been well. I look horrible. I know. Oh, no. I don't. I don't. She's got to be. Right. Okay, let's start. Right. Hey, shut up. Right. Oh, okay. Here we go. So, it's, it's a sort of mystery um, quick effect. I don't like this as well. So, hey, we're starting. So, so what we I'm know. I'm is at nine. It's still wet on top. <laughs> shut up. We're listening. We are listening. Right, a, a lot of a lot of um, historical research and a lot of archaeological research has been undertaken in the Porth Kerry area and called that. Um, and and one of one of the th one of the things that we we do know about um, is that um, we we've seen a massive influence on the landscape um, at the hands of humanity on Porth Kerry and completely across the Barry area. And one of, one of the things that I really do see a lot, and I really do question as I'm driving along throughout the countryside um, and various other places, is that. how much of the landscape that I'm looking at has actually been changed. And when, when, I, when I'm looking along through woodlands and all the rest of it, most 99% of the British landscape that we're seeing today has been changed at one time or another by our human ancestors. And what's more acute, one thing that I'm more acutely aware of uh, is that in many ways, what we do see across the landscape of our wonderful land is that most of the changes that we can see across our landscape have, have very much occurred over the past 300 years because of the Industrial Revolution. So when you think about that, up until about 200 years ago, most of the South Wales valleys, in fact, 
had not been changed. It was all woodland. And then suddenly, um, then suddenly the mining comes in and everything goes. All the trees go, the and landscape is completely changed, <laughs> and everything is very, very different. So so in on the backdrop of that, I really wanted to sort of think about what the landscape of, of sort of Barry and Porth Kerry had been like. And so what what we what we do see is, is very much even even before this era of Rome um, and the and the sort of Roman influence, it's very possible that Fourth Kerry and Coldnap and um, and sort of uh, the sound between uh, uh, Barry Island and mainland the mainland um, had been used for harbourage for many many generations even before. Um, any idea of the Roman era ever came to this this landscape, and when you think about it, this, this area that we've got in and around Barry is absolutely fascinating. Uh, I, I'm going to say it, and Pete might agree or disagree. Our landscape is very similar um, to Cornwall in that there's lots of coves, there's lots of inlets, um, and it, it's it's a very interesting and intriguing landscape. And it would have been very much like the sort of Cornish landscape. Um, you know, over 2,000 years ago. And you might disagree, but that's very much what I feel. The difference today is that most of our landscape is full of houses, industrial landscapes, um, the docks and all those other things. So so what, we've, what we're thinking about is, is 2,000 years ago, lots of harbours, natural coves, and dominating that landscape, overlooking that landscape, would have been the dwellings of those local inhabitants. One thing that we do very much know about when we look at our local landscape today in and around Barry, the Barryan district, uh, is that lots of what existed 2000 years ago has been eroded into the sea, very much so. But the thing that is very similar to the past as it is today is that our landscape in the Vale of Morgan in and around Barry partially, except for the north of Barry, is very rich agriculturally. So, so we can we can see and feel that. And and one thing that I may not have mentioned, and, and if I have mentioned it in passing, is what we do see is 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 that this local landscape itself is very very rich in building materials. So you've got your wonderful carboniferous limestone, which you do see up and down the, the coastline between uh, Coal Nap all the way through to Port Kerry and on from Port Kerry all the way to Roots. Beautiful carboniferous, uh, beautiful Lias limestone, I should correct myself. Beautiful Lias limestone, blue limestone. And then on Barry Island itself, what you do find is carboniferous limestone. That's where Friant's Point is, the good old hard carboniferous limestone. So Barry itself has been built out with carboniferous limestone from Barry Island and the Lias limestone from along the coast between Colnap and all the way um, as the coast keeps going. And lots of, lots of that has been quarried out over the years. And trying to find early quarries is really, really difficult. Trying to find those early quarries that may have been used to build the landscape from um, the Roman period onwards is very, very difficult because what we do see is lots of those areas that had, had been early quarries uh, have, have been eroded into the sea or the rest of it has actually been quarried out. So this local limestone um, was very durable for building homes um, and it's it's and lots of the buildings that, that you do see made out of this carboniferous or Elias limestone. Um, lots of the foundations are still standing today. Um, so, so this is the thing: the geographical nature of the land was very useful to ancient man. And in fact, what I'm reading out today was actually written down in 1991, and I was only 16 years old. So what, what I'm doing today is, is trying, to, see trying if, to see if anything that I said back then has actually changed today. And much of what I've already read out hasn't changed. So there is a great deal of archaeological fact when we look, up, when we, when we look at what we're, we're examining today. Um, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe the coastline as it was in 40 years AD, 400 years AD, 800 years AD. Uh, um, 1,080 years AD, 1,500 AD, and 1,700 AD. So that, that's rather, rather interesting that, that, that we sort of go down that avenue, 
right? And um, in, in fact, um, the, the map that I'm looking at today, um, th this one here, uh, describes what can only be described as green the green green woods. And when you think about it, rather interestingly, spreading all the way from Porth Kerry, all the way over to um, the shoreline where we used to see the sound between Barry Island and the mainland. That was all full of trees, as far as the eye can see. Various oak trees, elm trees, ash trees, all those very, very old trees. And unfortunately, I don't know a single ancient tree standing within this landscape, which is a bit of a shame. All those trees seemingly have been pulled down for various different purposes, which is a very, very great shame. So th those dates that I mentioned, why 40 years AD? Because it's just a few years before the Roman era within the area. Why 400 years at AD? It's, it's, it's about the time that uh, things very much change, not just in, uh, in regards to the Roman era, but um, the, 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 the temperature and everything changes. 800 years AD is, is a very interesting um, day and age because we're not really sure what was going on back then. 1080, 1090 is a period when we're looking at um, the Norman um, era and influence within the area. 1500s, why? The tides got their own back for what man had done to stop them. Um, and what we're trying to say, say about that is that with, with that, um, we're, we're, we're seeing massive erosion along the coastline. In 1587, for example, a great storm blew up and destroyed cliffs ports along the South Wales coast. And that was before the great tsunami. tsunami. <laughs> Yes, that was that was before the Great Tsunami. So there are other events um, that do yes, happen. Yes. So that date, Pete, reminder, 20th of January, 1606. And what was the other date, Pete? Um, well, the uh, 17th of <laughs> March, wasn't it? No, the, the 30th of January, uh, 1607. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah, yeah. But what well, well, I've mentioned, I've mentioned Depends another whether date. you're using the Gregorian calendar or not, yeah. Or the Julian calendar, exactly, yeah. it's exactly. So back in, back in the year 40 years AD, what was different from what it was today along our coastline? Temperature. Yeah. Temperature. Now, um, we're not going to go off on a tangent, right? And you're all going to disagree with this, but I do not believe that um, uh, human beings are responsible for climate change. I think it's a natural event. What human beings are responsible for is the destruction of the tropical rainforest, the destruction yes. of the landscape, the mass, the mass extinction of thousands and thousands of types of animals, the complete destruction of the earth. But I do yes. not believe that I do not believe that we are responsible for climate change because I think it's a natural phenomenon. And there are lots of experts coming out who are talking about that. But we have in turn destroyed uh, large chunks of the planet. I'm not going get, to get off on an environmental lecture, though, as I've already started off there. But the temperature was two degrees higher back in the year 40 years AD than it is today. So some people would argue, like myself and Neil Oliver, a quote Neil Oliver, that... Um, that in fact, what what our temperature is going back to is what the temperature was, um, what the temperature was uh, two thousand years ago. Yeah. So, so the other thing as well is the temperature two thousand years ago, um, the water level uh, was a lot higher than it is today, um, and it's very like, likely. I'm going to quote this: um, the tide uh, would have been smaller. And what we mean by that is the rise and fall of the tide wouldn't have been as great. So as Peter knows, and I know, and the rest of us know, the rise and fall around our coastline can be up to 14 metres daily, um, which, which is quite a lot, to be honest with you. But back then, the rise and fall wasn't as great because the temperature was higher um, and the, the water level was naturally higher. So the displacement of that was very, very different. One of the reasons for the big Peter, rise and to... fall was the uh, the advent of the rivers the uh, the severn the the wide the avon and mm. and all those rivers actually coming into uh, coming into the bristol channel against the tide and that's right. what creates the rise of t all right exactly. yeah it, it, exactly and and the point is back then because of the water level being higher 
uh, because it, it, it's not going to be affected as greatly as what Peter described, which is a very, very important point. Thank you for putting that in, Peter. And then that adds into something else as well. Pete's point um, that what we do find is that there's because there's a lesser rise and fall of tide back then, it means that there are great there are a greater number of mud flats out there in the seven estuary. And if, and that that's and because there's a lot of stuff being brought into the seven estuary from those rivers that Peter so described. So we've got a lot more, a lot more of those mud flats. Um, and and also what we do find as well, which isn't in this report back in 1991, right? is the fact that um, erosion of the coastline is going to be a lot less. Um, we're not going to have those, those dramatic rise and fall of the size to destroy, destroy the, the coastal line. Um, so this meant as well that this meant as well that um, this meant as well that what we what we do find um, is that you, you've got more of these inlets which are accessible um, to shipping, for example. So we, we, what we'd like to mention is, is, can you remember that site down in Porth Kerry called the Bulwarks? Yes. Yeah, yeah yes, exactly, the Bulwarks. And uh, uh, what, what, what we've got showing on the screen uh, is this little chart I drew. So what, what, what you've got, it, it, I, I would argue that the coastline is a, would have been a lot further out than, than what's showing, but, but what, what, what you've got here is, is what we would refer to as the bulwarks, and you've got this Porth Kerry Harbour, and you go over here to Coldnack, um, and obviously you've got this as well. So, and I, I do apologise. The, the Barry Coldnack, Railway was, was, uh, went down there, didn't it? Yeah, but, but not in the 40 years AD. No, people. no. <laughs> but you can still see the uh, the some of those um, little stanchions of the Barry Railway, as opposed oh, yes. to the British Railway. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and obviously, if you go down the the boundary markers, if you go down to Porth Kerry, yeah. you can see BR. And the, yeah. well, don't they, Pete? The first thing that that people see when they see these things down in Porth Kerry that, that say BR, every single time, Pete. What does BR mean? And everybody looks at you stupid and says, it means British Rail, of course. Every single time. Yeah, so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Every single time. Every single time. So so what, what we find, what we find with the bulwarks. Now, this is interesting. When I was writing back this in 1991, I said the bulwarks projected out further than it does today. The cliff was around 30 um, foot further out today. I would argue that it could have been as much as a kilometer further out than it is today. Because that explains, because what we've got at uh, Bulwarks is the site sort of comes at an angle and sort of ends at the cliff edge. Well, that would have come out much, much further. Actually, the Bulwarks itself, I do believe that the, the size is about 10 acres. Maybe it's probably a lot more than that. But um, that, that, it, that itself, um, that we've probably lost about another five, um, possibly a lot more acreage of, of the Bulwarks. Um, and, and that would have projected a lot further out. So I believe that the coastline back then, particularly at the Bulwark, was was up to uh, one kilometre further out. And in fact, that leads me to a, a message uh, that um, that leads me to something that was printed in the Barron District News, I think, the other week. It basically described a group of uh, youngsters in the 1970s going out to what we refer to as Castle Rock. Right now. Castle Rock didn't exist back then because it was part of the land, right? It, it, it was it, it was an extension of the land mass. But be, over, over 1,500 years, that, that sort of headland became eroded away completely. And somebody mentioned that, that in the 1970s, they would remember at a very, very low, low tide. Oh, I um, read that. Yeah, yeah you read that. And they, they had actually walked out to it. They actually found some yeah. things great. And, and, and uh, Richard said, well, what is this then? And I said, well, we've got a plan of this from the 1700s. It's not Roman. It's not medieval. But what it is, it's related to some activity probably in about the 15, 1600s. We don't know what was going on there. But it may have been still sort of accessible as a rock. Um, there may have been, there, there was a structure on there. I've actually got a plan of it. Um, written by, um, and the plan is drawn by an antiquarian from the 17, late 1700s. So that itself 
um, is is a very very <laughs> interesting thing to mention. But back then, that was actually, you know, part part of the cliff line and much further up. But that was really good that we've actually got that. So so what we what we can say is that the cliff line there is very unstable today, and it's, it, the cliff line is very very much that. Um, and this is this this is the thing. So. What 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 we what we do find there when you go along the coastline today is huge huge boulders. Um, we, we see massive massive boulders, uh, and 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 the boulders themselves, um, uh, boulders have sort of um, I, I think it's some somewhere in the region of about um, if I can remember a, a twenty five year half life. So basically, if a boulder is that size, it would be that size in twenty five years, and then it gets smaller and smaller. So what we do see is, is that these boulders get, boulders get very much smaller over time. I think you um, told us 50 years last time. So that, did I say 50? Yeah, I wrote it down. I say 25 seems too quick. Well, I'm actually, 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 do you know, Kate, Kate, do you know what, Like right? When I said 25 then, uh, my head was saying 50. If I said 50, we're going to go with 50. So okay. I'm glad you correct. I'm glad you corrected me on something I'd already told you. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that happens in our lifetime, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, you know what? I, I'm glad you corrected me. I, I, you are right. I did say fifty, and I will stick with fifty again. Right. So, so basically, what what it is this this uh, this this is another thing, and I'm digressing from what's here, which is fine. When you actually go down. And when you actually go down to the beach there, and I wouldn't advise going directly up along the cliff side and look it up, right? You've got to you've got to walk back anyway. So when it's low tide and you look up, you can actually see the ditches on the left hand side. You can actually see um, the sort of wavy lines of ditches. There's three multivalent ditches on the left hand side, and then you can occasionally see the ones on the slope on the right hand side if you look up. Now, where you would be standing, where as you look up, sort of 50 meters out, right? Where, or maybe 100 meters out, even better, and it's really safe there. Uh, um, that where you would be standing would actually be a solid rock. Um, solid is completely solid. This is how much it's all eroded away. That would be solid rock about um, 2,000 years ago. And the other thing I, that I would say, uh, this is a very, very strange fact, and I've, I've completely gone off on a tangent as usual. But uh, these, these were cut, I'll go back to this, these were cut um, into solid uh, Lias limestone, Triassic period, 150 million years ago. The ditches are interrupted and suddenly disappear as they reach the end of the cliff edge, and that's what we described. So if you align the ditches, um, they will continue much, much further out, more or less as far as, as, as Castle Rock is described to have been. Yeah. This is a platform about 200 metres from the shore. Um, and the platform running parallel to the coast is at 200 metres in length. So combining archaeology, so, so when you think about it, maybe the fort actually went out as far as that, but we don't know. But one, one, thing, one thing that I, I, I would hasten to say, oh. uh, this, is, this, is some, this is something that I haven't actually... Um, mentioned or even told anybody since we did the survey project right and i'm going to get my little i'm going to get my little drawing thing up here as well so let me get my drawing thing up here no we don't want that stop that um right um that was better I, what was better that's better what's better oh you got it yeah shut up shut up shut up right so um so one thing that one thing that i haven't shown He's anyone that. Right. One thing, I know I have, but look, shut up. One, 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 thing, one thing that I've not shown it's anybody about the general or, or discussed um, is that we did, act, we did actually did do a survey project of, of all the hill forts along the coastline um, about, uh, about seven years ago. Um, and when, 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 we did, when we did this survey along the coastline, what we found out was a revelation. Where you've got hill forts along the coast, um, there was greater erosion. Where you didn't have hill forts along the coast, there was less erosion. And do you know what we worked out? Mm. I'll show you what we worked out is this. So um, what you find, what you find with these, what you find with these hill forts, right? If I, if I draw this, right, if I draw this, what you find 
is you might find a set oh, of banks and ditches. Ruth, they don't look familiar. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what you find is in profile, when you look at it from the beach, you look up and you see a you profile. You look up at the, at the cliff, that's what you see. Yeah, that's right. So what cool. basically, if, if, we, if we want to do, so this is all, this is all the mixed soil and buildup in the ditches, right? But directly below this is actually solid bedrock. But what we did find was that um, when you looked at the profile of the rock, these areas here, um, had signs of stress. There were stress marks in the rock. Uh, because these ditches had been cut directly into the rock, uh, the, the pressure and, and the activity of cutting into the rock caused these fractures, meaning that these fractures, fractures go deeper into the rock, making the rock vulnerable, meaning that um, where you've got these hill forts along the coast where they've been cut into the rock, that's where the coast is going to be eroded most. Yeah, because if we makes sense, because if we well, it, it. but 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 the weirdest thing is, right? We haven't published that report yet. We never got it out to publish it, so nobody knows that. But you know today. Oh, wow! Right. You 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 got a fact that I've just told you. I've right, guys. We're finishing now. I'm giving you. That's a fact. worth the six quid question. right there. Yeah. There, there's a six quid right there. So uh, now, Kate, right, we've banked the six quid, right? We're going to go for another six, so I get twelve pounds out of all of you by the end. Yes. Uh, yeah, do you know what? I should. Ah, oh, my God, I could, I could make this as a Kate. I can make a lot of money out of this. What I could do is, in the next five minutes, come out with another rate, um, uh, and I and I banked them twelve quid, right? Uh, <laughs> I can make a hundred pound out of each of you per oh. class. <laughs> you don't know. No, you'd have to pick us up and sh turn us upside down and shake us. So much oh, of it is do. due to the geology of the area. Now the uh, Barry Island, uh, Sully Island, and the the the, the Severn Islands, as Platome and Steepome, are outcrops of the Carboniferous limestone from the Mendebils. Until it meets at Port Kerry, where there you got the uh, the much softer limestone, and where the two meet, that's where we get the difference, and where people were able to use the softer the, the softer limestone as opposed to the very extremely hard um, carboniferous limestone, but and with the upthrusts of that, we see along the coast. Even even more acuter, and what Richard Richard right the it is the at these forts that it, they are directly built upon lias limestone outcrops, and and there the the um uh, the erosion is accelerated. Now uh, the interesting thing as well is is a few years back, the year was two thousand and eleven. Uh, it came on the news that the the, the caravans at Fourth Kerry were being um, eroded into the sea. Yeah. Oh yeah, and yeah, that they happened to be very near the hill fort where there would have been other activity. It's interesting that prehistoric activity um, is actually affecting what's going on today. I, I think that's quite ironic, um, and uh, that's not really, you know, you can't really sort of link too much in that because obviously the fort's a little bit over here and the caravan parks there. However. However, um, we do know about extensive quarrying. Where the caravan park is, is, is directly in an area where, there's a, where, where there was an old limestone quarry. And all the banging, all the sort of heavy hammers and all the rest of it breaking up the rock there would have undoubtedly struck the ground and caused fracking, and uh, uh, not fracking, fractures down below. I don't know if any of you have actually seen the hill fort at Lantwick Major at Colhue Bay. Now I was told, and I don't know how much truth this is, but in the last in the last um, seventy years, forty feet of the coastline has been directly eroded where the hill fort is. Now I can believe that because when I was little, yeah, you caused going, it. I caused it. No, I went to Antwerp Beach and it was sand, hmm. and now it's all rocks. Hmm. Yes. Oh yes, yes, and those <laughs> rocks are actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when I was little, there was rocks either side, but there was yeah. always a strip of sand. Because <laughs> we used to get, me and my brother used to play, get clay out of the rocks. 
we you know what? Make- you, you know when you were nineteen, that teenage girl. Were you that teenage g- uh, girl at nineteen who was running down the beach uh-huh. naked? Uh-huh. Hey. Were you that uh-huh. naked teenager that was running along that beach? Uh-huh. That Probably. Yeah. No, no. I can tell. Probably. But anyway, anyway, yeah. cracking, cracking on. So what we need to do now? We need to turn to Port Kerry, Pete. Would you say Porth Kerry is a really sheltered area? Uh, yes, it certainly is. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's got that thing, isn't it? Between the two, yeah, well, between the two then, hills. Yeah, well, back a, then. Yeah, go on. I say between, between the two hills, it is a really sheltered area. And ideal yeah. for, for, for landing and using as a port. Uh, and one, one, one of the things is, when you... When you oh, shut up. Uh, one, one of the things is, when you actually go down to Porth Kerry in the winter months, uh, you it's actually do see Porth Kerry, Kerry extensively flooded. It's completely flooded. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, right, I'm going to see how intelligent I was in 1991 and see how much I've lost that intelligence by reading out directly what this written here. 40 years AD, the sheltered area of the Porth Kerry Park is good in protecting animals from the elements. The trees since 10,000 years BC in Porth Kerry have grown there since the last ice age when it retreated up north. The remnants of the woodland in the area at present remind us of, of the great great green wood which once covered Great Britain after the last ice age, after last ice age had gone away. This is pretty good stuff. Protection from the elements was very important to ancient man, as man at this time was very primitive in South Wales, staying in small groups in, um, to hunt the wild red deer. New valleys and streams were left by the last ice age, with moraines forming new lakes. As the area of Port Kerry was so ideal for shelter from the Bristol Channel, man had the good idea of turning all the advantages of the Porth Kerry area into a port complex. My God, I wrote that while I was 16. That's brilliant. That's well bloody done. brilliant. You know what, mate? Right? I'm going to go back in time, Ruth, mate, right? and I'm yeah. going to be that person. OK, I'll go back in time and we'll get married. <laughs> how, old will you, how old will you have been in 1991? 91? I don't know. Oh, God. I'm not saying. <laughs> I was born in 67, so I don't know. Oh, oh my God, you, you would have been a mature 26-year-old. Oh. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Is that right? 27. No, you would have been 25. Wow. I was about, I was like a stick insect then. Hey, you, would, you would have had a 16-year-old with a 25-year-old woman. How would that have played out? <laughs> when I was I 15, I was going to have a 25-year-old. <laughs> Jail, maybe. I was about 58. <laughs> hey, hey, Pete. Pete, love, right? You've all, you're already married then, right? And I'm not trying it on with you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> um, the cliff area of Westwood Corner. Now, Westwood Corner is Westwood Rise. Remember that one. Um, or as it is sometimes called the Bull Cliff Rock. So that area as well, that's another name for it. This area would have been crowned with trees. Many more than than there is at present today, uh, as then the cliff area would have been much, and it says much of it has now been destroyed with the Bristol Channel's waves, much greater. So yes, that's right. And the interesting thing as well is, if you go up near Bull Cliff, you will notice that if you squint your eyes, you can see little posts on the cliff 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 edge, right? And, and they they put new posts in. Basically, the cliff edge is retreating. Right. And if anyone owns those houses on Marine Drive in approximately 300 years time, watch out. Your house is going to be in the sea. I say that in Panama. Ah, but yo, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, luckily for us in Barry, really gloating, knowing that those houses at Wimborne Road and whatever road they, they've got in Panama, right? Knowing that the houses are worth a million pounds in about 50 years time as the coastline is encroaching, they won't be worth a penny. No. Oh well. Don't worry, Pete. Your your house will just be flooded. You can put your house on stilts. Well, this um, house, the, the hill that my house is on, this I think has moved. I've got cracks where my extension attaches. Not only that, but next door on one side, and a couple of houses over on the other side, both of their rear walls fell down the same night. 
So I think the hillside actually moved. There, there is one thing, right, Kate? If you ever do, um, if you ever do want to sell your house, make sure you get somebody in to uh, fill those cracks up and render on the outside, and then sell it. But nobody will know. Oh yes, yeah, so we we'll say nothing. We we'll say nothing. No. We'll say nothing. Mind you, Peg, Kate, we've just recorded this so they can look at the recorded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all doomed. We're all doomed. Oh, that's so right. Right. Anyway, carry on. There might have been in front of the cliff an, um, an isolated stack platform. Now, that's really interesting. So when you think about that, Pete's point, right, because um, I, 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 Pete, Bull's Nose is actually um, carboniferous rock. I think it is actually carboniferous rock surrounded by yeah. Lias limestone. I think it is. Yeah. Um, and therefore, when you think about it, if you look at the way it's formed, there, there may have been a stack of rock further out, right? Mm. But that would have been, may have been an arch and everything there. So think of that, how, how different that would have looked like. When we look at Bull Cliff Rock today, um, it's described as um, the Devil's Cavern, right? Um, and the Devil's Cavern, um, and you, you're going to have to look whether it was Carboniferous or Elias Limestone. Don't double quote me on that one. But whatever my notes are saying you just think just think about that i'll read this out again there might have been in front of the cliff an isolated stack platform which had been carved away by the sea and and now being formed under the cliff rock is a cavern called the devil's cavern that's interesting the water seems to be coming in it seems to be creating a nose and there, there might be something happening there the cavern is being formed from both sides and the opposite part of the cliff is being eroded much more slowly than uh, than uh, the devil's cavern this strengthens my view um, that there was once a stack uh, of cliffs thousands of years ago the caverns will eventually form a blowhole cave arch then a stack my god how the hell did i write this stuff Pete, this is amazing oh do you know i gotta I tell you what, don't tell Richard, right? We're gonna we're gonna forget the bloody book. We're just gonna publish just, this. Just republish that. Excellent. Just republish this. It's excellent stuff. It's excellent. On to the cold <laughs> nose. And you know what I'm gonna do is put a naked photograph of me on front and I will sell at least two copies. No, to one one to me and one to Kate. On to the cold <laughs> uh, This is a natural harbour area. Cold Nap Natural Harbour, that's a really difficult thing to take. It was a natural harbour area of Cold Nap. And the sea continues to cut into the rock here as it is soft stone. And this is 40, uh, 40 years AD, 2000 years ago. On either side of the Cold Nap, Cold Harbour, the stone is hard lias limestone, not carboniferous limestone. Uh, I do believe there's, there's carboniferous outcrops there as well because Cold Nap Point is a carboniferous rock. So there we go, it's fact. There are two points which stick out into the sea. One of these points is, is at Glanamore, where you've got the, it's basically a sort of natural sort of um, a cauldron, sort of a, a sort of a natural harbour. So where Cold Nap, where, 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 where you've got Glanamore, where the Roman site is, that sort of naturally sticks out. The other bit that sticks out is Cold Nap Point, as we know. These points shelter a harbour leading from the Nap and leading as far back as the Romley Park. Now, Peter mentioned earlier on that, that what we've got into cold, into cold Nap, what we've got, we've got a, um, a bridge. Um, because that go, uh, There's an embankment above. Well, I'm going to say it. Yes, bugger me. Um, back back 2,000 years ago, there was no embankment there at all. The water washed all the way as far back, lapping. Yeah at the base of Barry Castle. Yeah. Well, that, when I say that, that's a bit dramatic. Barry Castle was a lot further set back. But you know what I'm trying to say? It's, it's where the Gorsed stones are, right? Uh, you, you could probably chuck a stone where the Gorsed stones are and it, it, would, it would go into the sea. Right, yeah. Right? Um, if you were a great tosser like me, you, you, you would have had great yeah. effect. <laughs> Look, look, I, 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 I entered a tossing competition once it, it, and I, I was actually good at um, stone skimming. I was brilliant at stone skimming. Right. Anyway, so, so here we go. The inlet to the Romley Park at the Cold Nap at present is now blocked up by the sediment from further up the coast. Then the inlet would have been open to any trader who wished to use it. 
So was the legacy of the time. Uh, it says here in brackets, e except for people from Cornwall. The cold that point at this time was being formed um, into an island, just as it is now, a kind of large stack or platform. That's really interesting. That is very, very interesting. Um, whenever I see descriptions of, of the cold nap area in the Roman period, cold nap is actually an island, right? But when I, I'm actually going to correct myself because if only I'd read this when I'd actually be writing my later books on the Romans in the area, uh, it, yeah, maybe actual cold nap point was actually connected to the mainland back then which would mean that cold nap would be a much more sheltered harbour. Wow, yes, I see that. Um, the sea cut around the cold nap point, making it into an island, as we now see it. Pete, why didn't I read this? I, do you know what? I haven't actually read this in... Um, in how many... When was the last... Do you know what? I haven't actually, I, I haven't actually read this in, in, um, in 30 years. Amazing, isn't it? Stop writing this down because I know you're going to make a book out of this, uh, Kate. Yeah. Um, and you. I see it... because cold, cold nap actually means sheltered harbour, doesn't it? Uh, and also, do you know what they were going to? I, I think it. I think it does. Nap, as in point. Yes. 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 But the other thing as well is, do you know what? There was a there was a petition not so many years ago that they were going to actually uh, change the name from cold nap because it indicated that it was a cold place to live. <laughs> and the, oh. person who put the, the person who put the petition together wanted the value of their house to be much greater if people approved the change of name. Oh. It was just for the person would, would be able to sell their house and get more money for it. Money grabbers. I, I, I like the name Cold Nap. It's, it's, a, bit like, it's a bit like sitting in his house. On the left, you'll see. What's going on? Going to nip to the room. Have a break. <laughs> well, you can have a break. I, I, I we'll, 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 we'll crack catch on. I, I know you'll catch her. Anyway, we've only got about fifteen minutes to go. <laughs> so, because, because I, I, I've already banked my. Uh, I got a back. I got a. Uh, uh, Kate, I got to come up with another fact to get another six quid out of you. We'll, 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 we'll keep going. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um, so. <laughs> Kate, Kate, could I have used the cold map point? Could I have used that as being connected to the mainland as one of those facts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've banked another six quid. Wicked. I've, I've asked my <laughs> um, So, so the Glanimore point, which which had a soft area of land on its eastern and western sides, only its eastern side has been cut away. There is now a cliff on its westerly side. So, what do we mean by that? Hang on a minute. So. What we're saying is that the bit that sticks out of Glanamore because it was Lias limestone had eroded away. Oh, that's right. And obviously on the opposite side, because it's Carboniferous limestone, that's why we've still got that there, which means the sea would, would take a long time to erode its western side, making it an island. I see what it says. So in other words, the, the eastern, uh, so the eastern side had eroded away, right? At, at Glanamore, as part of the harbour, that had eroded away because it was soft lias limestone. On the right-hand side, Peter, the Carboniferous limestone eroded only between the point and the land. And so this is why we still got the island there at Cold Nap. Because up until, that was actually a water-worn island um, in about the 1700s. So here we go. Um, and you know what? We've, we, haven't even, we haven't even got, well, we'll have to do the rest next week. Because, okay, here we go. So is is Kate is Kathy back yet? Um, any second, not quite yet. Well, can you stand? Can you stand around and make her nervous so she pees quicker? No, I can hear the feet. She's coming down the steps. I think. All right. Yeah. So here we go. Let's go to the old. Let's go to the old harbour, folks. The old the old harbour was a natural hut shelter. It is positioned behind the Barry Island. It is a natural haven. And do you know what? That's where the original Barry Harbour was going to be in the 1860s, in the 1860s, 1870s. But the schemes were abandoned. The harbour was used by the ancient merchant trading. Oh, no. Peter. It says the harbour was used by the ancient merchant trading Celtic people. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Of it was course. acceptable at the time. Of course, we were everywhere. It was acceptable at the time. Right, okay then. They traded in boats called carrigs. These are small vessels with one small sail. Here we go, I gotta say it again. The Celtic peoples traded in Barry for the following reasons. By the way, I've lost six quid out of all of you because I'm, 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 I'm disagreeing with the facts, so I'm only getting six quid out of you this week. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it to myself, Kate. Right, so what we've got, they were trading good wheat, good meat, good wood. It, well, is it in, isn't good wood in England? And pottery. The small items, brooches, mirrors, buttons, etc., brought into Barry were much sought after items. Um, and it's saying here that these may have come from the Roman world, the Asian world, and the Middle Eastern worlds. These wonderful goods had never been seen before in Great Britain. I was making the point that even before the Roman era, after 43 AD, we've already got these goods coming over to Britain, which is something that I say over yeah. and over again today. So, Kate, does that earn me another, another six quid? No. The Celtic people were very good at making these things. That's right, craftsmen. Yeah, you're, re I, you're, you're really hitting me, Pete, aren't you? <laughs> Ships could be easily moored in the old harbour and navigation into the harbour was made easy by the wide entrance at both sides. So obviously you arrive, you arrive at a high tide, you moor, um, and you unload your goods um, on the low tide, and as you, the tide rises, you go out um, at the eastern side, depending on which side, which sea you came in. Because if you come in on southwest, you would come in in the eastern side, and you go out the western side. Anyway, that's life. On both sides, there are rocks, so creating a channel, and it is easy to find because the Bristol Channel acts like a funnel. The mud in the old harbour is very thick and hard to walk across. Ships can easily get. Uh, can easily be stuck in the sediment, but that mud and sand wouldn't have been there back then. But it is today. Now, when I first came to Barry, on Barry Island, there was a model of the old arbor, and the model of the old arbor meant it was going to be a marina uh, for sailing for um, uh, yachts and, and uh, uh, other small boats. Oh. It was going to be turned into a marina, which never never happened. But that model was on Barry Island when I first came. Hmm. And it's still talking about it. It's still talking about it. It's going to go down. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. It's, it's Hang on. Every, everyone but, stop. Everyone but will stop it now with all the... Hi. Everyone stop a minute. This is really important. <laughs> Peter, you know when you saw that model, was it in a glass cabinet on the front there? It was. Yes! Yes! Because I've been talking about these glass cabinets on the front and nobody knows what I'm talking about. Brilliant. Thanks, Pete. That's going in the next book. <laughs> to, get, to get the fish. Right, right. Okay, okay, Pete. Right. Uh, Pete, we'll, we'll have to have a chat tomorrow night about that one. Remember what Barry, you've written in half of them. Island, glass, cabinets. I knew they oh. existed, but everyone thinks I'm going nuts. Well, I am nuts. Right, okay. The Calixton River, the U, as it was once called, it was called the U, as in the U yeah. tree, the Calixton River, the U. The Calixton River um, ran through where we describe the old harbour today. It sort of ran out there, led yeah. out into yeah. the old harbour, which was fresh water and lots of sediment. Fresh water was close at hand for the locals to drink. And the other thing as well is one thing that was proven by a lady called Janine, who was the actually... The first two people to come along to my Barry class a few years ago was Janine, uh, Neil, and Peter. Uh, Janine, so Janine actually, uh, coming out of the old harbour, uh, approximately just beyond where Storehouse Point is, just beyond where the, the lime kilns are, down in the mud, there's water flowing out and it's fresh. Out of the mud there, it's flowing out there. The river, uh, so anyway, now we know the river now the river now has been diverted, but then many streams lead into the main river. The mud and the silt was eroded from, from the sides, from the sides, hang on, from the sides of the river. The fresh water qualities of the Calixton River brought animals far and wide to drink out of it. And why not? In turn, this brought man 
who followed the animals and ate them, who eventually settled in the Barry area. This is sound stuff. Some of the animals, <laughs> deer, spelt D-E-A-R, I can be forgiven, uh, fox, rabbit, hare, badger, wild bear, and so on, could have got themselves yes. stuck in the, in the mud. Uh, more food for the locals to prey upon, easy targets. Mm. There was, and still is found, many salt and freshwater fish at the outlet of the river. More food for the locals. Pike, salmon, trout, mackerel, and carp, and so on. Um, and some of them still live within that uh, washy landscape today. So what I'm going to do now is that we're going to finish this little bit, and then we're going to call it a day, okay? The rerouting right? of the Carrickson River was to uh, promote the, the building of Barry Island as such. Yes, it was. And it, now it comes out of the And the docks, Bendrix. of course. Exactly. Now it comes out of the Bendrix. So the warm water of 40 years AD with a temperature on average was about two degrees centigrade higher than, than the temperature is now. Sharks, whales, turtles and dolphins would, were often seen in the Bristol Channel, the dragons of the sea. Now, that's a good point. I would go with that. These animals would have drifted in from the Atlantic Ocean. Um, sightings were very common. And the Bendrix rocks further over, in, uh, to, further over towards the west in Caddickston were irregular rocks leading into the Bristol Channel from the Atlantic Trading Estate. Some large rocks still run into the sea, still being a danger to shipping. Much of these rocks have been constantly underwater and eroded fast by the very rough tides. Constant sea weathering cuts away at the ledges of the Elias limestone. The rock here is the same as the rock um, that we find at Cold Nap. So obviously not the Carboniferous, but similar to the stuff over there as well. The Barry Island comprises of old limestones, Carboniferous limestone. Therefore, the older the rock, the more it is, but the deeper the down it is underneath um, other sediment, sediment, the more compressed it gets. Around the Barry Island were softer rocks, which were far younger than the limestone, such as the sandstone, mudstone, etc. These lay above the limestone. The soft stone eroded very fast, leaving an island isolated from the mainland. The island has been a buffer against the sea for many years. It will remain so for, for many more thousands of years and, and you know, 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 know what we're going to stop there and we're going to say i salute the young man i was in 1991 for that because that was bloody brilliant Hiya, we're going to look at more next week yeah Where, where's everyone coming <laughs> <laughs> carl 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 we went home carl. last week <laughs> yeah. where where was the causeway oh um there was two of them. We we, we know uh, about the the. Um, was uh, there the one more or less from the watchtower? Right? Yeah, from the watchtower. Yeah. Um, no, 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 from storehouse. What's that? Oh yeah, still in the house. Yeah. Bloody hell! I'll give Sharon a ring after. So, okay. so basically, from here. So basically, yeah, from okay. where the lime kilns okay. are over to the island, that was the walkway. Yeah, yeah, and on the oh right. Side, and then we've got one on the opposite side as well. Depends. When you say the opposite side, do you mean from the old harbour side? Oh, okay, thanks, side. Not from the Bendrix. <laughs> from, from, from the Bendrix point, all the way directly across there, there was another crossing. Oh, right. Oh, my God. Woohoo. I got six there, pounds there, there, here. There was another crossing. Oh, my God, you've got money out of it. It came back to you, Ty. Sorry. <laughs> Right. right. Are we with it back again, Pete? I'll be there now. Hang on. <laughs> God's sake. I, 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 tell, I tell you what, right? You, you guys are a bloody nightmare. Hello. 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 Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Can I do a thing? Well, Tony asked me to ring you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Oh, and so I'll ring off now because I'm I'm done a Carl lecture. Okay. Bye. Bye. Money. It's money. 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 Oh, oh sorry about that. Hey, 
Right, okay, next week, next week, right, I, I'm going to make it no, a rule that we can have to have a mobile phone switched off. So, right, okay. Um, so what I, what I wanted to say was that um, we will do more of that next week. So what I want to ask is, that, are there any questions from anyone? Mm. Um, I'm fine, thank you. We're fine. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 but, right, so, so Pete hasn't got any questions. Kate hasn't got any questions. Kathy? No, thank you. I'm fine. Ruth hasn't got any questions. OK, right. So uh, anyway, I do I do believe everybody's given towards the collection and that that is actually going to go towards the rent of the studio now because uh, um, we, we've got to I've got to try and cover that as well. So that's good. So thank you for the collection money today. And now we're going to have the raffle. So how are we going to have the raffle? Oh, I don't know. I'll get the prize, though. I, I, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. So what we're going to do, we're going to give everybody numbers for the raffle. So, Pete, you got number one. Oh. Right. Kate's got number two and three. Oh. No, she's got number two. Oh, no, Kate deserves another. Oh, no, Kate can't win it, can she? Right. Oh, well, yes, um, I did. I put my pound in. Yeah, but what <laughs> you to pretend to be surprised. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, should we, right, if we, I, I, we better, we better not put a pound in for Richard because you know he's going to win it. So, right, okay. Oh, no. So what, 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 what we've got: Pete's number one, Kate's number two, Kathy's number three, and Ruth is number four. Right, uh, and, and we've got to have an update on the um, on the U.S. elections in a moment as well. So, uh, oh, we'll have an update on the U.S. elections before that. So we'll see how many. Um, sorry, Pete, this is just to wind everybody up. Oh my God, the the um, the, the uh, Republicans are in the lead. Uh, in the Senate. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was in the Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be ahead in Congress as well. Oh, they're oh, dapping up God. for anything over there, aren't they? But so <laughs> are... Right, so I, I'm going to look at the US House just to wind Peter up as well. So, oh, and, and they, they are 199, the Republicans, in the, in the House against 172 Democrats. So in other words, it looks like uh, the Republicans are, Republicans are going to take both the houses. That's Donald Trump's. Oh, no. Uh, also, hang on. Hang on. This is going to wind you up. Yeah. Also, there are now more Republican um, governors than Democrats. Yay! It used to be the other way around. I think it used to be 30 to 20. Pete, this, this is just to wind you up. I'm sorry. I... I Pete, I really apologise, Pete. This is just to wind. Pete, if you if you had said nothing in the first place, right, I wouldn't do this every week. I know that. <laughs> no. well, like okay, I said, so... it, it just goes to show, doesn't it? The <laughs> sense of it. the sense of the people over there. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm okay, sorry, everybody. Everybody, here we go. I watched this Judge Judy, so I realised just how sensible they are. <laughs> Uh, oh, we love Judy. This is this is the generator one to four. So you've all got your own numbers. Pete one, Kate two, Kathy three, and Ruth four. So what we're going to do? We're going to press the generate button and see who wins the prize. Get ready. Get ready. Oh, I'm so excited. Three. Three. <laughs> Kathy. Oh, it's me. Yeah. You won. Oh, thank you. Hey, we've now got to open the prize. I want to know what the prize is. Oh, I thought I had to open it at Christmas time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an unusual object to find. Oh, does does she open it at Christmas time? You gave the prize. Does she open it at Christmas time on that? <laughs> It'll take you to it Christmas. Might, it might take you to Christmas. It's oh, I'll just rip it open, will you? Oh, oh, usually, come on. Um, I'm terrible at open presents. I have to unwrap them properly. I, I saved the paper as well. <laughs> oh, it you know, makes my, it last longer, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, my mum's second husband oh, used to get the Christmas paper and flatten oh, every bit like that. Oh, right. Is that a, a, like a selection oh, of oh, knots? Oh, oh, where'd that come from? I left you it. That's your little present. Oh, 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 listen, what? right. He's what, untying what, it. Come on. I'm still entire not. I should. I shouldn't have wrapped it so nice. You should have. Lots and lots and lots in it. I, I'm going to decide who who gives the raffle prize next week, right? So we're going to we're going to do the same rule, right? We're going to generate a number, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to one to four, right? <laughs> the one who provides the raffle prize next week. So here we go. Okay. It's number two. So Kate, you can provide <laughs> okay. the raffle prize. That's next okay. Week. I I can cope. I can cope. <laughs> 
Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. The rope. Yeah, sorry, anybody anybody can find weird shit. It's me. So, sorry, 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 Pete. We've got to wait until she's opened her prize, then we can call it. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's taking a week. Oh, are we? Are we all okay for next week? Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah. All right, how many weeks are you Oh, she's doing almost this? there. Oh, for God's sake, Kathy. They're doing uh, we, suspense. We will do it next Wednesday. Where are we? We'll do it next Wednesday. Yeah, where? Uh, we'll, Here we'll again. Do, this way we'll again. The following Wednesday, right? And then we'll do it. Um, then we'll do it the, the Wednesday. Show so it, it to looks the like we're doing it for four weeks. Four weeks. Oh, I'll pay for four it's weeks. It's a souvenir. Then. No point of Iran. Iran. It's, wow. a, it's, Iran. A, a week. it's a pleather wallet from Iran. Oh, was it yeah. that? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, pleather is um, is that um, fake? You know, plastic. I was going to say it's not. It's not leather. It's um, tapestry. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. also yeah. fake leather. Oh, I see. Oh, lovely. Hey, grab it off her. We want to see it. We want to see it. Oh, grab oh. it off her. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a wallet made of pleather, and it's a souvenir from Iran. Look, oh, you've got God, these sort of Babylonian dudes on it, and I that master it. thing. I want it. You want it. <laughs> well, she, you might be able to get it. You know, she might sell it. Yeah, how much are you going to offer? <laughs> yes. A pound? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, God. Right, okay, okay, okay. Right. Pete, Pete asked, Pete asked the, the, so we'll be doing this for the next, another three weeks after this. Pete said, why doesn't he just chuck over um, or the one amount uh, four weeks? He, he's, he can do that, so that's fine. Um, and what, what I'll do, the um, that I'll just chuck it all into one and that, that can go towards the rent in Barry, so that'll be good. So then okay. we'll be back. Then we'll be back in Barry on the first Wednesday of the month, okay. which will be the seventh. Right. So, it's really uh, in there. I know. Right. Right. Hey. Right. It's lovely, so. Isn't it? yeah. It's not often you get a mirror. Hang on. Hang on. I don't have anything from it. Iran. We don't get anything from Iran, do we? No. Did you actually go there? No. But it's one. It's pitched up in this charity okay, shop. Okay, oh, volunteer. Right. Beautiful. Right, I spent I, a few okay, weeks gonna... in Iran in the 50s. Right. Oh, was it from the 50s? I, I said, yeah. In Abba Down. Oh. Pete, Pete, do you, do you want to chat, chat to these guys a minute while I take a phone call? Go on then. You you, you chat to these guys. I'll, I'll, I'll be back. So did you say you've been to Iran, Pete? Yes, I was in wow. Abba Down. Abba Down, which is in Iran. Hmm. And uh, there, as as seamen, we would we normally uh, put into a, a a club, if you like, when we went ashore, where we could buy beer and stuff. Because uh -huh. uh, in in Iran, it was not it was not saleable outside of the uh, these sort of compound things. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> we managed to get out. Um, they gave us cardboard money to spend over there, reals, cardboard reals. Oh, weird. And we swapped them for real money, and we got, we got out in a taxi and asked them to take us to a uh, for Coca-Cola, and they took us to a Coca-Cola factory. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you asked for. <laughs> we got what we asked for, that's right. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Yep. Oh, what fun. <laughs> Yes, it was uh, a strange place in those days. I used to go out with an Iranian. It's nice true. to see you looking so well, Pete. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, nice to see you, Pete. Nice to see you, love. Yeah. I can see you look better. Whatever that was well, that bothered you, needed well, to yeah. get sorted well, with. I had a quite a nasty fall. I don't know if you can see. Oh, my goodness. Head. Yeah. Oh my yes. goodness! Was that bruising? Is it? Yeah. 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 Oh, right. Oh, oh, any sense? Did it knock any sense into you? I don't think so. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Then. Never mind. <laughs> no, it's good that you're all right. Do you want to come here, Pete, next week? No, I'm fine. Okay. No, no, I stay here. Okay. Can you can you get out to the boat? Are you all right? You know. I can. Yeah. Well, well yes. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Good. 
Is Thank you, it's good that the, the world can come to you, it's I suppose, isn't it, on the internet. It's, 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 it's one of the good things. Yeah. 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 So well, she does it on, on a Tuesday oh. evening anyway with people from Cumbria. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, are they in Cumbria, the Tuesday night people? The Tuesday oh, night oh. people, yes. Oh, my goodness, I didn't know that. I, I often sort of watch. I didn't realise it was so far away. Yeah. Mm. Huh. How did they find out about Carl all the way up there? Weird he went wonderful. up there. He was up. He'd been up there. He was up there for some time. Was he? Oh, don't! Yes. You know when I went on my Dubs tour around the M25. Yeah. Yes. I met someone that knew Carl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, <there you> are. <laughs> so yeah, words of him gets around. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. When I drive to my brother's, I pass. Um, uh, Zangford's uh, scrapyard, and it's Thanks got loads and loads of ca scrap cars in it. <laughs> I'm sure they're all the ones that he's been driving. <laughs> so that's where he goes to get them. <laughs> yeah. Get that. Get that. Get that. I don't do anything online, so all of this is. Um, you I, know, all I do and I me. don't. It's yeah. like they closed we, Barclays in Barry. Yeah. Now, I. I don't shop. I don't do anything online. Well, you have well, I, can, I, I can do some shopping online, but I prefer I, to shop in real life. I don't bank online. I, can I bank don't. Online. I don't basic. Yeah. I don't bank online, or I don't even go on that. You know, the doctors have got that thing. Oh, I can't do that. No, I won't go on that. Oh, there's loads of great stuff on YouTube. Loads of history. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm I always trying to go on YouTube because they tried to charge me for something when I inadvertently. They said I must have gone, so then yeah. they're trying to take a payment. Oh, no, you no, no, don't. No. Just go on YouTube. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a name of somebody who's really good. There's a channel. Um, I really like him. His name is Stefan Milo. My sister always goes on YouTube, but I say, no, I'm not going on it. If they no, try to take my money. He, he does, does so. Uh, he does all lots, lots of good uh, videos on YouTube. write that channel uh, that you were on, on as well, Lydia. Which one was that? The, the the one you were that was playing the politics stuff. I can't remember. What you oh, X twenty two report. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Sorry, Peter. I say there's lots of good videos on on YouTube that you yeah. can watch. Yeah. My sister says this. She said you yeah. ought to go on oh, it. Yeah. She's on it a lot, but I... I've just been put off it, thinking they're going to take my money if I press something. No. I know. Yeah. Oh, there's no. loads, and you can you can search in the search bar on yeah um, YouTube yeah. archaeology, and loads of stuff comes up. Yeah, but how yeah. do you avoid pressing? I've never had that. I've never had that. Yeah, it no. happened to me once before on my phone. And, oh, um, not they did actually. You got a laptop? I got could. a tablet. So I'm going to laptop. Yeah. On a tablet. But they yeah. did something I pressed on, on my phone, did take £40 off my oh. um, phone. Oh. But it was Vodafone, my company, yeah. got it back. Yeah. But I, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware I'd done it. Yeah. But apparently they said I sub sub subscribed to a magazine. And my first payment of £40 yeah. was going out. And I thought, good God, what am I? I didn't even know I'd done anything. But yeah, Vodafone got it back. So it eventually yeah. it credited it back to me. But it made me weary. Yeah. Because everything, if they can do I that. Know. What because, can they do? Yeah, You're they can right. just You're... put it onto your phone. And yeah. Your bill. That's You're another reason careful. why I don't use, like to use my phone no. online at all. It's too easy to press the wrong thing. Exactly. You'll be all right. Go on your tablet, on your YouTube. You'll be I've fine. I've got YouTube on my telly as well. You know, I've got my doggy short. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You know, I've got my doggy short. £40 a month, right? Phoned up yesterday because I need it. They didn't know a clue what they were saying. He just said, oh, I'll send you a form. I said, I wouldn't know how I get yeah, um, Oh, I'll send you a form. A I said, I want to know your politics. Yeah. All right, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and it's all about, it's mostly all about, um, at the moment, um, Ukraine and all that that's going on. Oh, right, on. yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, I might try YouTube in that case then. Yeah, cause, oh, because there's no time to do that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, right. Okay. 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 You're all you rip a bit off of there. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Stefan Milo, you'll, you'll, I think he's, I think he's got a degree. I don't think he's actually a teacher. He just researches himself now and does these things. Um, Stefan Milo on YouTube. Yeah, he's come out quite nice. But he does stuff about, um, you know, in the she, different kinds. She want to go out. She was scratching. I don't yeah. Know. I'll let her out now. I the door on YouTube. 
Have you got a garden down there as well, Kate? Yeah. Go ahead and look. Yeah, please with my wallet. Thank you. That's, uh, oh, yeah, I'm so yeah. glad. It's the weirdest thing, isn't it? Yeah, because, yeah, there's nice, it's, it's like, like a little bag as well, isn't there? Well, that's good, isn't it? I love it. And the uh, Duran. <laughs> anyway, have you ever seen, I don't know if you're interested in that, Pete, yeah. but this Stefan Milo does lots of prehistoric stuff. Oh, oh right. right. Mm. And he does lots of... Um, I don't know, the different hominids and stuff. And oh, he's also yeah. done this thing where he's like written... Um, I would just be looking. I don't know, a story about some... The weather would become an expert on weather. I don't know, some merchant in the, in the Iron Age or something like that. It's just so interesting. It's because he just loves it, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, and the Duran, which is a, these two journalists that talk about geopolitics. Mm. And it's interesting because it's not the usual. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Lola. One, you know, on the corner of. Um, she likes doing this. Everybody's been rubbing her tummy. Yeah. And feeding yeah. her biscuits. Right. Well, yes. Uh, and do you know the good shed? Let me show yeah. you. No. The girls are looking out my window. I'll show you out my window now. Yeah, they are. I'm staying where I am. Yeah. <laughs> Better what you know. Are you all there still, folks? Yeah, yeah I don't. I've just picked up the computer and I can't understand. If we were all here, right. we wouldn't be here. Really. Yeah, I, I get, I get, I get to be another two minutes, if that's okay. Yeah, I can't see you. I get to be another two minutes. Okay. I can't see Pete okay. anymore either. Now. I don't know what I did. So what have you done? <laughs> I don't know. Can you see me? Yeah. Oh, great. Then I can show you out my window. Hang on. Oh, wait. Let me... What do you it's do? That oh, no. one. Zoom. I thought so. I, I thought so, but I, when it didn't, you see. But if you can still see me, look, I can look. Right. That's the view. Oh, no. Oh, dear. There we go. Out of focus. Oh, dear. It's out of focus. Can't see it. Oh, dear. Uh, it's a big picture window that goes all the way around, three sided. Yeah. Whoops. I can't see anything. I don't think it's working at all now. <laughs> take you from us, Peter. Where is it all in. gone? It's like a beautiful three pages. There he is. There he is. There he is. Anyways, I, I'm like directly above the docks, you know, right. directly above the docks. But, you know, up to Newith Road and around the corner. <laughs> but something that's really great, people will probably know about this. Um, a website called Marine Traffic, and you go on that, and you click on the live map, and it goes all over the world, and it'll tell you what ships are out there. You can yeah. click on them, and it tells you what their name is, where they're going. It's really super. Mm. Really super. I think you can do something like that with airplanes as well, can't you, I think? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I've heard yeah. that. So that's what yeah. my fiancé Sky does. Glass. Yeah. He looks... Because he's a taxi driver up in yeah. Edinburgh, he looks for when the flight's coming. No, that oh, was right. Not yet. Oh, I thought, thought you were going to tell us he was, he was going to shoot them down or something. You know? <laughs> you know, this, you know, on his mobile, he's, oh, that one hasn't come yet. This one's. I'm not good. sure really what. Uh, I wonder what to do with that. What Carl still wants with us. Carl, do you still need us? I don't know. I don't know how to. Does that look any better now I'm further back? Pete? Pete? Oh, can you see? Um, no, it's, it's still out of focus. I'm going to try putting it right against... You can against see it's a window, but it's, it's all out of focus. Oh. Is that any better? No. All oh, right. Oh. oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> you can see a white expanse of sea, Pete, so you can <laughs> like it because you would see the ship screen. Oh, so it is lovely. see them right round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And upstairs, I can see oh, a bit good, more good weather conditions as well. If you understand Amazing. clouds and things, I got a book on it. Clouds, clouds. yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be good. Yeah, I'm gonna borrow it, Kate. Some cloud formation. Um, no, thank you, but that's no. very sweet. Yeah. I'd look it up actually. Oh, you can get on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Excuse me, I'm my turn to go upstairs. I know it's tea and coffee, isn't it? It's just a I know, you're not looking at it anymore. Mm -hmm. 
I got a back bedroom, I suppose, if if I had to, yeah. if I had this done to a back bedroom. But then all yeah. I see is my neighbours. Yeah. <laughs> their roofs. I look so at the Windham Street and that's yeah. it. But I've got, to, I've got to stand up to look out there, you know, because yeah. my windows are there. Yeah. And I don't like it. I, it's all wrong. It would be worse than if you had a view. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can look out into my garden and there's some, uh, there's a pair of pigeons having nooky. Is there? Yeah. A lucky pigeons? Yeah, they, they, they've just had a bath in the, in the bird bath. And, uh, oh, yeah. nice. Making themselves clean for a bit of nooky, yeah, is it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Do you, do you want me to get my? Do you want me to get my uh, cockerel? <laughs> no, no, my my turkey, my turkey. Do you want turkey, me to get my turkey? Yeah, you're say Baldrick. Go on, Baldrick. go get Baldrick. Oh, I'm going to get Baldrick. I'm gonna, go I'm on. Gonna there, I'm going to go get my Baldrick. And I go get my Baldrick. Like, what's that? Baldrick. 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 What's in the background there? Just the door. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Door it's like yeah, it's like the right yeah. That's the roof. Yeah. Oh, God. 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 Oh, isn't he gorgeous? Oh, he is. Oh, no. <laughs> Hello, Baldrick. No. He knows his name. Harry. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh, I'm glad nobody's eating him. That's good. Yes, not yeah. nice. No, no, he's he nice. beautiful, isn't he? Look he is. at his oh, Sorry, oh, I thought it was... I was he's beautiful, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He is vegetarian. You might be a vegetarian. Sage and onion. Yeah. Yeah. Sage and onion. No. I'll just go, I'll go back to Baldrick and I'll put him back outside. Bye. Oh, bye, Baldrick. Bye, Baldrick. Yeah, you look after him. Look at I'll be back now. Like, yeah, he's going to be eaten now. He is, he is a veggie, isn't he? Yeah. 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 I think he is a veggie. He won't eat him. No. So, I wouldn't either. No. I had friends who were raising animals. Oh. Too. They named the rabbits breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Is that Aww. awful? I can't stand it. Oh no! Is that when you watch um, my, my country got file? Two, they do two it all dogs. the time. Got three now, but two dogs. Yeah. Fanny and Dick. Yeah. <laughs> are they going to eat them? Are they? No. Oh. <laughs> Fanny, come here. Dick, come here. Oh. Fanny, get away from Dick. Oh. <laughs> well, the guy opposite me used to have ducks, and now he's all quiet, and I wonder what he did with his ducks. Uh -oh. so I, I, don't, I don't want to ask. You're, you're um, veggie, isn't you? Yeah. 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 Do, do, you know, do you know what? The other day, I, that I picked up a fly that somebody was going to step on, and I moved it. That's how you're vegetarian, you know? Mine has gone tall. Is that, is that, what's it? Mother, mother's mother's yeah. It's gone tall. I've anyway, just it. Right. It so anyway. Oh, we're going we're to have to call this a day, so we'll, we'll see you, we'll see you all next week. Okay. All right. We'll see, okay. you, okay. see you next week. Think about see you next week. See you in the movies, Pete. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Right, think about what I said about Sully. Um, I'm going to um, have a look for some stuff at Sully Church Graveyard. Oh, right. Yeah, Oh, so, Kathy, so, Kathy, have a word with have a word with um, Peter, okay. uh, Peter, oh, Peter. Richard about going over there, um, and we'll do this next week at eleven thirty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then, well, I get, I'm going to say goodbye. So, Kate, um, and Kathy, and Peter, and Ruth, and we'll see you all next week. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thanks for joining us. Bye bye, folks. Bye. 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 Love bye -bye. you. Bye. bye. See you, darling. Yeah. Yeah. I want my hug. Oh, yeah, go, go. In the yeah, there you go. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you. Oh, dear. Oh, God. Ow! We better get going. Bye-bye. Yeah.
to our high vessel like with the Republican victory. Yeah, yes. Yeah. See, but I need it by there, don't they? <laughs> I'm down Windu Street, so I'm down the hill, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It's um, Tin Hill now. I feel, I've been turned right right, and it's and down the hill, isn't it? Yeah. I walked down. Yeah. 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 Yeah.